Hello, welcome to the part two of the tutorial series on reinforcement learning in Godot. Let's start by recalling the reinforcement learning setup. First of all, we have an environment. And in this environment, there is an agent. We can think about uh, an agent as a player. And so our neural network gives this player an action that it performs. After performing an action, the agent gives back the observation to the neural network so that it could, can predict the next action. The environment, based on the action, gives an agent reward. The goal of the network is to maximize the future expected reward. Now, let's talk about implementation. The environment runs in Godot and the neural network is implemented in Python. They have to exchange observations and actions. Imagine you have two threads. First, the Python thread runs and it computes the next action. Meanwhile, Godot thread waits for the action. Then the action is sent to the Godot engine and Godot resumes the processing. Now the Python thread waits for the observation. When the observation is sent to the Python thread, it processes the neural network, updates the weights and stuff. And we repeat this cycle on and on. Let's finally start writing some code. First, let's create a new directory for our old project. I'll call it Lander with a VS Code. So let's open this folder and create a new file that corresponds to the environment. Let's call it Lander environment file. First of all, we need to import Torch. After importing Torch, we import Godot environment that we compiled in the previous part. We import sub process, but we also import the library called at exit for cleanup. And finally, we import gene that uh, implements OpenAI gene environments. From gene, we import spaces. Let's define our class, render environment, and derive it from gene environment. This class should implement several methods. We'll start by init. The parameters that we pass to the init are the path to the executable of our environment. Then we pass PCK path. We will export PCK and resources separately because it's faster to iterate over our implementations this way. We also have optional render and we also pass non actions and non observations. First, let's define a handle. A handle is a basically a name that we assigned to our shared memory region. Using this name, we can recognize the shared memory region and check whether it exists or not. Then we allocate the memory itself. We use uh, our library to do this and to pass the handle to it. To synchronize two threads, Python thread and Godot thread, we use uh, semaphores, which are implemented in the Godot AI engine. When we're constructing semaphores, we name them and we have two semaphores, one action semaphore that tells the threads when to stop to wait for action or to resume when the action is sent and one semaphore for uh, observation. We initialize this, these semaphores with a zero. That means uh, they are blocking on this thread. Next, uh, we allocate several tensors in the shared memory. First, the tensor for passing agent action. To allocate them, we use instanced class of uh, shared memory tensor. And we use load tensor uh, for agent actions. Again, each tensor should have its own unique name using which uh, Godot will recognize it. We also have observation tensor. We name it observation and the size of this tensor will be non observations. Finally, we want to redirect the outputs and the error streams. We open two files, stdout.txt and error file. And we will uh, get, we'll close them on exit. The function uh, that closes them is passed to the library at exit. 
Now we have to call the Godot environment. The first uh, command line parameter is our execution path that we pass to the init function. If we don't have PCK path, that means our resources are embedded in the executable and we don't have to do anything else. But if it's not the case, we'll have to add a new parameter called path with a path to the PCK. And this path should be absolute. Also, to get absolute path, we need to include for it twice. Now, if we're not rendering, we can pass uh, another command line argument, which uh, disables render. Finally, we pass the handle to the Godot process. And we launch it. Great. Then, part of the implementation of Blender environments, because it's derived from gene environments, uh, we should define action space and observation space. And we use box uh, action spaces, where we define low value, high value, and shape. So for action space, our shape is num actions. And type of the variables will be uh, low thirds. Because gym environment uses NumPy, we also have to import NumPy. And the observation space will be extremely similar, except instead of num actions, we have num observations. Now we have several functions to uh, implement. First, render function. Because we are not rendering separately, we just have an empty render function. Next, we have step. This is the main function that's used by the external algorithms to send actions and receive observations from the environment. Here, we write to the action tensor, the action that we received from neural network or whatever algorithm we use. Then, we post the semaphore, semaphore action to tell the other process, uh, the Godot process, that uh, it can proceed with uh, getting us observation. And meanwhile, we're waiting for observation. After Godot gets us the observation, we just read it. We should return observation, then reward done and in the last argument that we just ignore as you, as you can see we haven't defined rewards and done yet so we just do that we add two new tensors so reward tensor we call it obviously reward and the size of this tensor will be just one and similar thing for done and the done tensor it does need to be float because the only two values it can have is zero or one. The zero that means not done yet with the episode, and one is okay. Uh, the episode is finished. When we get the observation, we also get a reward and done. Great. We implemented the, the most important functions of them all. Now another important function is reset. After the episode, the environment is done, we have to reset the agent to a new random position and repeat everything. And this is implemented in the reset function. It takes an argument called seed, which defines the seed for randomization when we reset the agent. For now, we just ignore this argument. To tell the Godot thread that it needs to perform a reset, we have to define a new tensor and we'll call it uh, environment action. Environment action tensor is the action that the environment itself needs to perform. For example, close the Godot thread or uh, reset the agent. And in this case, we have two actions, close the thread and reset the agent. So when we're resetting, we send, we send the following tensor, one, zero. The first argument is whether to reset the agent and the environment, and the second argument is whether to close or not. Then oh, we signal the Godot thread that it can perform the action. And finally, we wait for the response. The function reset should return the new observation. So we just read it from the observation tensor. And return it. 
with this, we conclude uh, the implementation of the lender environments in Python. Now let's uh, implement the control parts of the environment. We used the engine compiled in the previous parts of this tutorial. We create a new project in the directory that contains our Python script. Let's name it lender environment. And we'll use OpenGL ES2. We are going to work in 2D, so make a node 2D as a C node. Rename it to environment and save it somewhere. Then we attach a script and let's start coding. First of all, we define a variable for the shared memory. Then two variables for the two semaphores, action semaphore and the observation one. Second, we define variables for our shared tensors. Agent action, observation, rewards, done tensor and of course an action of the environment tensor. Now in the ready function of the root node we first look up the shared memory that was created in our python thread. We do this by instantiating the class C shared memory. If this memory exists uh, the function exists so will return true. In this case we look for the semaphores in the shared memory. They were also created in the python thread by the way. To do so we instantiate classes C shared memory semaphore for action and observations. Afterwards, we call function init that takes the name of the semaphore to look for. Next, we look up for the shared tensors in the shared memory. We use the function of our shared memory instance called find float tensor or find in tensor, depending on the variable type uh, stored in it. We also pass the tensor name to it, and the code is similar for all the tensors, agent action, observation, rewards, done, uh, which is an integer tensor, and finally environment action tensor, which is also stores integers. Also, let's indicate that we are running the environment from Python. The string that we print will be redirected to the file stdl.txt. In this tutorial, we are using physics engine to perform the actions. So we implement the physics process function in which we are waiting for the action to be sent by the Python script. The semaphore function wait blocks the execution until the Python thread calls the post function on the same semaphore. After waiting, we read the agent action tensor and the environment action tensor. Well, uh, we do all this only if the shared memory exists. If the memory does not exist, uh, let's capture the user input. We need it to debug our environment. Recall that our action is just one value, same for the observation. If the user presses key A, let the action be minus one and plus one if the key D is pressed. If we press the escape key, uh, the environment action, that has two variables in it, a signal that we should quit the game. Let's assign the signal to the second value, it equals one. Finally, if we press enter key, the environment resets. The first value in the environment action tensor will be responsible for this action. We want to assure that the actions are performed at fixed time intervals. So to do this, uh, we create a timer node. It will be launched when we receive an action uh, and upon the timeout, we send an observation to the Python thread. The delta between action and observation should be some small value. We store it in the variable delta t. Now let's connect the timeout signal to some function in our environment node script. Here we are sending the observation back to the Python script by writing to the shared memory tensors. Well, only if the memory exists, by the way. We use uh, an empty observation for now. Similarly, we send reward and done tensors. Finally, to signal to the Python thread that, that it can resume, we call the function post of our observation semaphore. Now we perform the actions sent by the Python threads only when the timer stops. So in the physics process, we add uh, this condition. 
Meanwhile, let's also fix some silly mistakes in the user input capture. Also, I start the timer only after it was stopped. The door runs physics and logics uh, in different threads, and our timer timeout function will be executed in the logic threads, whereas uh, physics process function belongs to the physics thread. To make these two functions run at different times without overlapping, we create a new semaphore, physics semaphore. We instantiate it from the Godot built in semaphore class. Initially, it's in the blocking state, so we call post function straight away. Then we add wait and post calls in the physics process function, and the same block goes to the timeout callback function. Let's add a basic agent to our environment. We add a rigid body to D node to our scene, create collision shape to D, uh, that will be a circle. And let's place it at the screen center. Then rename the node to agent and add the script. The agent should uh, perform actions, so we add an act function with an argument action. Uh, it will apply a force to the rigid body along x-axis. The initial action will be zero vector. We implement integrate forces next, uh, where we set applied force according to the variable force. Now, when we receive an action from the Python thread or the user, we call the function act of the agent. Now let's test and debug our environment. First, let's remove the gravity. Now, if we press D, uh, the object will accelerate slowly to the, to the right. And upon a key press, uh, it will go left after a while. Uh, well, it works for now. Now, let's uh, test running the environment from the Python script. Uh, we'll create an export template for Linux and use a debug template that we compiled in the previous tutorial part. Uh, click Export Project and name it Lander Environment. Then we export PCK into the same directory. In our Python script, we add uh, if name equals main. Uh, we then initialize the environment class using executable and PCK paths that we just exported from Godot. We also turn render on. Now we iterate for a thousand steps and pass a constant action to the environment. Uh, this action is the tensor containing one. Uh, it's of the type flow32 and uh, is on the CPU device. Let's try and launch uh, the Lander environment script. By the way, do not forget to switch your Anaconda environment to Torch. And we got a bug. Um, this bug is in the handle variable that we passed to Godot process. This one is an easy fix though, and it runs. But unfortunately, we don't see our agent. Uh, in Godot, we have collision shapes visualization, but when we export the environment, it suddenly turns off. So instead, we add an icon to the agent node, export PCK again, and launch the Python script one more time. Now the agent doesn't move at all. After some head scratching, I found the source of this bug. Uh, to check whether timer is reached timeout, we use a stopped function instead of this madness. Now we again export PCK file and run the Python script. Finally, we can see the agent and uh, it moves to the right. If we change uh, the action value to minus one, it goes to the left instead. And it seems like everything works, and see you in the next part.